And welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, there's a new investigative report by Next Edition Media, which has thrown new light into the police investigation into Inua Bongimoran's death. According to the story, the police is covering up a lot of things, and these include the accomplices of the prime suspect, Uduak Akpan, and previous accusations that he works with a gang that has carried out serial killings at the same place where Umoran was killed, the reporter who walked in that story, Ibanga Isine, is joining us this morning. Mr. Isine, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So your report basically takes everything we know about this case and basically shakes it around a bit. I want you to give us um, you know, more clues into um, the reports that you've published about how you say the police allegedly covered up the case and compromised it. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, this is a very sad um, situation uh, we found ourselves uh, in Aguaybom State. Um, uh, first of all, the police has lied, have lied about so many things, and um, it is not funny when you see an institution that is supposed to protect life and property doing what the police have done in Aguaybom State. I want to say that right from the outset, the police deliberately, deliberately, I'm using that word with every sense of responsibility, and I know what it means to be deliberate. The police deliberately um, failed to assist Inyobong, Inyobong when she was in distress. Anyone who would have listened to the audio that was shared by the friend and the sister of her shouting and Jesus so Jesus so would have known that was not the issue a case of a missing person that was somebody in distress and the police had that information and they still asked the distraught family members to go home and wait for 48 hours I think that was very irresponsible number two the police told us that immediately after they got the report, they swung into action. Now, you can imagine that this incident was reported on Friday evening of the uh, 29th um, of, of April. And the police did not take any action until this issue started trending on social media. And when the PPR Ramadan came up, he told us that the police immediately swung into action. And how, was, how immediate was the action when the incident was reported in the evening of uh, 29th? And then on the 1st, you told us that you swung into action immediately. That's number two. Number three is that the police, after they sluggishly went and started looking for the self-confessed rapist and murderer, they arrested him the next day, which was 30th, and took him into custody. It was on the 1st that the PPRO came out to address journalists that he was arrested. Why did the police that got information about a distressed person did not act on time. When it finally went to arrest the suspect or the self-confessed uh, killer, they failed to inform the family and take the family and the media along. They went nicodemously with the, uh, the, the accused person, the suspect, the person who claimed to kill, who accepted responsibility for the killing, and exhumed her body and take it to where the police public relations officer said was the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, which we found out was not true. In fact, the corpse was taken to a private local small mortuary in Dukurunse, far from the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, which the PPRO said. That was a lie. Now, when you exhume a human being in a location, even a, a, an, a, a small 
or an eagle um, investigator would protect the scene of that crime. The police left that place open and took the cops away. Now, a few days after, witnesses, uh, locals, and people living close to that area say people that look like policemen came back and exhumed so many corpses and took them away. Now, nobody knows as we speak those who came to exhume those corpses. And if you look at the holes, the commission of police called yam holes, and in which case no yam was planted there. Nothing like yam was cultivated. And in any case, do we cultivate yam in a dual state or any part of the South South? In, 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 I mean, do we dig up yams at this time? It is, it is, it is an insult. He just lied to us as if we are morons. That those were yam holes. Yam holes and the holes were stinking. Do we have that level of stink? So, Mr. Mr. From Mr. Yam Sine, in his village, Mr. Sine, just to be clear, in Ubon, was it? Mr. Mr. Sine, Why do they do this? Mr. Sine, can you hear now, me? Yes, I can hear you. I, I, need, I need us to be clear on what you're trying to say. You're yes. saying that locals saw people who say they were policemen. Who went to exhume corpses from that the particular? Said they were police. They looked like policemen. Okay. Who look like policemen? Who yes. went there to exhume bodies from that particular land where Umarin was buried? The compound. The same compound. That same compound. And then now you're saying that according to a police report, the police say those holes there were not. Um, it was were not, not a corpses. police report. The commissioner of police. Okay. Said that on national television. All right. So what's your what's that your again on the 14th? I'm trying, Mr. Isine, What I'm trying to get here is that you're saying that those places, basically those graveyards, so to speak, or those yam holes were graveyards, not yam holes. Is that what you're trying to say? They were shallow graves. Okay. I just wanted us I to get that. To the commissioner of police okay. to bring the forensic report that showed those places were yam holes. Okay. So, Mr. Isine, they were yam holes. Mr. Isine. All right. Yes. If, if you're evidence. saying that the, the police PRO said there were yam holes in the compound where Inobong's, um, Inobong Morris was found. It was the commissioner of police. I okay. did not say commissioner PRO. Of police. I beg it was the pardon. commissioner of police. Commissioner of police. If you're yes. saying those places were shallow graves, not yam holes, why do you think the police was trying to cover that up? You should ask the commissioner of police. Why would you ask me? How can I know what the commissioner of police was thinking or why he would say we would do that? All right, Ms. Aysine, hmm. uh, let, let's uh, bring in the perspective of uh, other people that might be working with the prime suspect here, Udo Akakban. Um, you know, your report also says that there's other people that very likely are connected to the crime, you know, that have, you know, seemingly been ignored, you know, in all of these uh, um, uh, police statements and the likes. Uh, so let's yes, talk I about that. that, you know, what, what, did you, what did you find? There's some other person called Emmanuel that you mentioned uh, that yes. doesn't seem to make the headlines Manuel. in any way. Emmanuel was actually the person. This is a syndicate, please. Um, Udo Hakpan did not directly contact Inubong Mumore. All right. It was MM who contacted Inubong, and the records are there. Now, one thing we should ask the Commission of Police and the security um, uh, law enforcement is why is it difficult? For them to call for the call law of Udo Akban for at least six months, see everybody who called him, not just that day, see the transactions in his account as could be found in his um, a, a deposit, the okay. alert, yeah. bank alert he got. Why is that difficult? Now, Imam was the one who uh, contacted um, in Ubon and said, the boss has a job and could give her a job and then exchange their numbers before uh, Uruapan came in. In another case, there is a victim who said she was lured by the sister of um, Uruapan. And when she was being raped, the sister was there, told her, babe, comply, comply, you will not go. And that this, this sister, when the guy had given, Urban had given this, I mean, this um, victim two wraps of Indian hemp to smoke, apparently to knock her off, and she was still on, and she wanted to rape her. 
and carried her kit out on the concrete floor. The girl shouted, and then the sister came out and said, it, it, was that what they asked you to do? Was that what they asked? That's what the witness said. I mean, the victim said, was that what they asked you to do? In fact, at the end of the day, when the, the, the Uruk discovered that this girl had given her number, I mean, his number to a friend and other people, and the other girl was calling him. He said that she has messed up, that she should go and bring her friend. Or whether they have somebody who has wronged her so much that if she sees the person at the point of death, she will not help such yeah. a person. And she said she was not bringing, she said she's fucked up. That they would give her so much money. I have witnesses, so many witnesses who say the same thing. So right. the sister um, was, when this girl, after this girl was raped, and she, they took a new picture of her, the Uruk handed over her phone to the sister and took this girl away to go and drop. It was on the way dropping this girl that when this girl met three Okada people, she now asked Ura for the phone. And Ura insisted, no, no, she was a prostitute. She picked her as a prostitute and um, did not perform well. And so he didn't pay her. And the girl said, no, 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 no. Started talking. And those cyclists asked the victim, what if we don't find your phone in, her, in his pocket? And he said, you will do anything to me. Unfortunately, the phone was not in Ura's pocket, according to the victim. What saved her from those cyclists was that they, he, she told the cyclist, check the, his phone, check if you don't see my new picture, if you see my new picture. So they checked, they collected the phone and checked and saw a new picture. They went back. It was the mother came out and said that they have been advising Ura, told the cyclist not to do those things again. So this thing has been known to the family. All right, and, and you know, from what your report also, you know, a lot of all these aspects that you've been able to uncover uh, don't seem to be making it into the police records. You know, it doesn't seem like they're uh, in interested, you know, in, you know, unbundling some of these aspects that you've brought up. Um, that shows the level of compromise. That shows the level, level of irresponsibility. Yeah. How, how would you the level of unprofessionalism? On how the how of would you respond to those who say, "Well, you know, some of your informants may be lying," you know, and these are all just conspiracy theories? And those probably who when they play... appear in court, I I I I, I ask the Kwaibum state government because this was a citizen. Let me do two parallels. Yesterday, just yesterday, uh, Alaji Ahmed Gula Ahmed Gula was killed in Imo State because it's one of them. One at the HL on one of those, you know, in authority. Yes. A, a politically exposed person. The same mm -hmm. yesterday, the police said they found the killers and killed them, neutralized, and they showed us graphic pictures. That is when the system is fighting against those fighting against them. When it comes to the people, the poor, the real people that should be protected, the police develop school feet. The police suddenly turns blind to, 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 to clear evidences, and they deliberately destroy evidence. I tell you, there's a lot of compromise. And if K is not taking Nigerians don't write to speak with one voice and demand justice and demand accountability on the part of the police, Uruapa will not, I mean, in Yopo, uh, Moran will not get justice. And there are so many people out there waiting who are ready to speak up at the appropriate time about their experiences with that family. And um, we should not just um, say, oh, the police, the police. How can the police just close an investigation just like that? I mean, Why yeah. did the police lie about everything? They, they, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean turned himself in, the guy who contacted, the guy who contacted Inyobong, turned himself in on the 30th and has been in course study. The father is a minister of God, is a pastor, and has been trying to bring the guy out. I have not done any speculation. I have done investigation for the past 20 to 25 years. Nobody has ever contradicted my report. I challenge the police to come out and say, my findings are not true. I challenge them to say they did not lie. Now, let me put some, some 
one one more issue to you. When the PPRO was speaking like a parrot, because I don't see any public relations officer who would say those kind of things to say. He provided a motive for why Inubo was killed. That she first attacked Urua. That was what he said. Who, who would say that you saw Urua who was given a VIP treatment? You saw what the police did to those who killed Ahmed Gula. They bloodied them. But in the case of Ura, he sat like, look, when I was arrested by DSS, I was treated like an animal. I did not commit any crime. It was just in the course of my job. I was treated like an animal. But look at the treatment. He was sitting, he was sitting like, look at, look at the audacity. He was telling people, hey, the commissioner has said, the police have said, you get justice, a hey, hey, cool down, calm down, calm down. People should calm down, that they will get justice. And the father said, if the system permits, because the father knows what they are, you know, what they have done and who are behind them, if they will, if the system will. So those are self-explanatory. The commissioner of police is not truthful, and I challenge him to come on this program with me and let me put those these lies to his face and let him lie again. All if right, Mr. Mr. Isine. His daughter or relation. I challenge him. Would he do that? Okay, Mr. Isine, your, your reports also, you know, when I read it, you, you mentioned a distinction that, you know, when the family reported this matter, they said they needed to wait 24 hours, you know, but it's, it was not a... 48 hours. 48, but it was they, not a case... They tell you 48 hours for a missing person, but this was not a case of a missing person. Exactly. So that, that this, I want us to be able to make that distinction, you know, like you did in your report to say, this was a case of a distressed person and what, what the police should do when, the, when a case of a distressed person is reported. Immediately. Immediately they swing into action to find the person. They swing into action. That's what every every um, responsible security agency should do. Swing into action because you've heard the you, the audio of the girl screaming. It's so heart wrenching. Now, no decent and responsible human being, even if you are a vigilante member of a vigilante, and you hear that video i mean you hear that audio you do not start running to that direction it was not as if people did not know where this girl went to they knew exactly where she went to they knew who invited her for interview they had his number and they told the police so you should ask the police call the call the commission of police call the mcdonald and ask him why didn't you take action i know that the uh, dpo of a waiter I mean, in term, a police station he is a one of the best in this country. I don't think he would have he was around. If he were around, he would not have treated that matter like that. Because I had an issue that I reported to him. I reported an incident at midnight about somebody in distress. I was given, I was in New York, and that person got into distress and called me. I called the the, the commissioner of I mean deputy commissioner of police. And they sent me immediately a patrol team. We went. It was the damn division, that same uh, division, that took that case. They went, arrested that fellow that same night and brought him into court study. Hmm. So right. the, the, uh, the uh, DPO of that station is one of the best, most, one of the most responsible, one of the best cops I've ever met. So All I right. don't think um, he was around. So, so All this is this a. Not have happened. So the, the failure um, to unveil, you know, and to dig deeper into this case, the failure to bring up um, uh, the Emmanuel fellow, the failure to uh, look into Udwa Akban's call logs, the failure to look into his uh, bank transactions in the last couple of uh, months, like you've said. Um, yes. Uh, is this typical of the Nigerian police force, or do you feel like there might be people in the force that do not want these things to be exposed? You know, as a, as a journalist and a researcher, I don't make assumptions. Everything I've said here are based on fact and verifiable evidence. So I won't make any assumption about anything. It is when I make a finding and I'm sure of what I'm saying, I can say that. But 
I will stop at saying that the police is unprofessional by leaving the crime scene open and perhaps allowing people to go and destroy those things. And let me put something to you here. Everybody who has been invited, including the victim I spoke to yesterday, said they submitted their CV and credential to you, I mean to Ravan. Now, all those CVs, all those uh, 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 credentials that you found books of children, uniforms, uh, 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 NYAC shoes and all that, were, were belong to people who might have been killed in that in that compound. Now, the commissioner of police was saying that those things belong to members of the family. And everybody, in, in fact, there's a report I'm working on, I'm not going to disclose the substance of that report. That shows that almost everybody he invited went with their credentials. So those credentials were burnt. They were allowed to be burnt. As I speak to you today, if you go to that compound, you will still feel the stench in all the holes. You will see bones. You will see human bones. Don't mind those who went on the street to say they protested. They're calling for justice. Some of them are fake. One of my correspondents, my reporter, a young reporter I'm mentoring, when they took pictures, and a very senior member of, um, what do you call them, FIDA, sent a very, I, I, I think, very irresponsible text to her. He started by saying, are you Nifreke, Jacob? And I challenged him, if anything happens to Nifreke, I will hold them responsible. I'm calling out the FIDA chairman in a quiet state. I'm calling out the feeder chairman. I have the text message you sent to Nifreke. Uh, if anything happens, because if you are truly a member of FIDA and you have the interest of people at heart, you will not send that text and ask her, hey, now that you have published, uh, what do you intend to do? Uh, how do you, are you sure of Sorry, this and that? Sir, um, um, what, what is FIDA? What we are saying. Um, Mr. No, I have to raise this issue. Yeah, so what, I, what is FIDA? Can you, can you reporter. share what's, what's FIDA? Federation of uh, International Women uh, Lawyers. Okay. okay. FIDA, yes. The lady sent a chat to the reporter asking very queer questions. Asking, uh, so you are Nifreke Jacob. How did you find this? How did you find that? How did you find As if she is an investigator, is a police officer. Our jobs are to expose. Our job is surveillance. Surveillance is one of the functions of the media. An investigation is part of surveillance. And we have done our jobs. If the police claim what I said were false, they should come out with the fact. And I'm ready to shame them again. Okay, All right, quickly share you know, with us you know, where, where the case is currently. I know courts aren't um, um, active in many parts of the country. Uh, but it also seems to be dragging or taking some time, you know, for the investigation to be complete and for Udwakakpan to be charged to court. Uh, but what no, is no, what? It's not because of investigation. From uh, what I've learned, the police has concluded they have concluded the investigation. It's just because the court workers are still on strike. That is the only thing. And and I use this opportunity to call on the governor of a private state, um, Mr. Louis Emmanuel, to empanel a different um, team with forensic experts to go back and look at the scene of that crime see what they can find and ask the police you said you arrested this person on this day why did you not tell us the truth you said you have no accomplices but this other person is in your custody why did, are you keeping him as furniture why did you keep him? Why are you keeping him if he has nothing to do with uh, what you investigated? You said you deposited the cops at the University of Yochichin Hospital, and that was a lie. What? These are very simple things. Why would the police fly over this? And why would the police offer a motive for somebody, a criminal, even when he never told us that in the public? The PPR said, oh, the girl hit her with a transformer. Every girl that had been interviewed who has been in that compound said there's no light in that compound, they use generator. Who uses a, 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 a stabilizer. stabilizer in a, I pass my neighbor? Who uses stabilizer? 
No, ask the PPRO who uses a stabilizer in a compound that I use. They use. I passed my neighbor. Uh, because that was what they had. There is also, um, you know, part of the report that says, you know, that uh, there's a, a certain time uh, a young woman ran out uh, naked from yes. that uh, compound. Neighbors, neighbors. I have. If you listen to the video that we posted with the story, you will hear the person who took a reporter round talking about that some of these trees that you see are planted here are human beings, and that he when when they kill people. They remove the part they want and then put the remaining body in a sack and bury them in a sack. According to him, when they bury in the sack, when they want to look for the bones, people come to buy the bones. They can just go to the sack and it won't scatter and, and pull them out. But that's why they bury them in sack. And they bury them in sack because they would have caught every other part. So you can't just bury, you can't just bury them normally. And that most of the trees that are planted in that compound, if you dig around the compound, even look at the soccer web pit, there are so many corpses still there. The area is stinking like mad as we speak. A, 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 a witness said a girl ran out of that. So many times, women will run out. I don't know why they, they are all, they, are, they specialize in women. They specialize in women. And so uh, neighbors will tell you a, a woman ran into the compound, I mean, ran out. And then people will tell the ah, what is happening? He said a case between a girlfriend and a boy. And this guy looks so harmless. So harmless. Hmm. So with the ongoing strike now, it's it's uh, according to you, it's up to the governor to, to do something about this quickly. No, it is not the duty of the governor, but because one of the cardinal objectives, in fact, the main duty of the government, the responsibility and functions of the government as provided for in the constitution is is to protect life of uh, of citizens and the property now if we find that what the police have done is not good enough then the government can impanel a different team to go back and investigate and bring out more evidence i would want forensic experts to be deployed to that uh, location I want the call logs of Uru Akban for six months, the past six months. Okay. The call log of the father, the call log of MM, a, 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 to, to, uh, to, to be obtained. And the a, a forensic expert and expert, security expert, would study them and know exactly what they were doing, who was speaking to them. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to tell you that, oh, a politician is involved until I find it. I can't say it. Okay. We are still following some of the digital footprints of people he spoke with, but we don't have the technology to unravel some of these things. We have a lot of information. My team back there uh, uh, in, 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 in Uyo, in Lagos and Abuja, have gathered a lot of things, but we are just handicapped. We cannot uh, go beyond the level we've gone for now. But... Um, we, we, if, if the government wants this case to really be handled properly, I think they should impanel another team and get them to work um, and present a, 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 another report so that the two reports, with the, what the police have uh, provided and this other independent report could be looked at and then see how um, this can go. Because we are talking of diligent prosecution. The quality of investigation that is done by the police is what helps um, in prosecution. Look at the George Floyd case. The, the, the prosecution took time to study, analyze, and bring every material evidence that could help them in handling the case. And that was what happened. When you see a police lying on very simple things, then you begin to imagine all right, what so, so is, it, is, it possible, it on trial? is it possible for, for citizens to, um, you know, ask that um, uh, Emmanuel, the Emmanuel fellow, be charged, um, you know, for, you know, being an accomplice? They is can't, it possible they, he for... can't be charged unless the police does the needful or an independent, um, um, uh, maybe civil society groups. Yes, go, so, so is that, is that, is that possible? And make a very strong demand. Is it possible as, that... As you speak now, non 
no civil society organization is speaking on this issue. All of them are quiet. I, and I don't know why. Yeah. All of them are quiet. I mean, they are trying to with, with the... rubbish everything um, people have done about this case. And it is not unusual. Yeah, with, like, with, with, like with the say, silence of like the say, with the silence of the police, like you've mentioned, you know, and the fact that you know it seems to be a closed case when there's so many other angles that you know yes. could also be brought up, you know, with this case, you know, there's some there has to be a way that you know people can call for you know those call logs. There has to be a way that people can call for those bank um, you know logs also, um, instead of just sitting back and accepting you know that the case is closed and there is there's a a lone suspect who has you know confessed you know to the crime. Um, so what would you, from your perspective and from the years of experience that you have, what would you ask that citizens, civil society organizations, anybody, um, you know, tries out in order to ensure that these other aspects of the case are um, un unraveled? I, I think um, uh, there's a process to that effect. At Tiana, a uh, 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 cultural group in Aquaibum State has uh, appointed um, a senior advocate of Nigeria, one of the best in the country, um, Barista Mwoko, to be their eye during the trial. I think uh, people like that should make strong demands and uh, question what the police uh, have done already. And then civil society groups should speak up. I, I have not seen any civil society group within Akwaibum or outside Akwaibum speaking up in this case. I, I, I am not alien to this kind of situation. I was a reporter, a young reporter, a cop reporter in Imo State in 2003 when Angela Ihentuge was, was, was murdered and then her private part was removed, her eyes, and she was seven months old pregnant and they removed the fetus. And I was the only journalist in Imo State at that time who reported that story. And the government then, Achike Udenwa was the governor of Imo State, and Achike Udenwa said, um, Chief Press Secretary, Declan M. Elumba, called me and said I should stop writing that story. And I uh, even um, wrote to Punch that uh, it was lie. Azubeke Ishekwene was the editor of the Punch at that time. And my immediate editor was um, Judy Pride. They asked me to provide evidence. And thank God at that time, Punch had given us cameras. When no newspapers in this country had cameras and computers, we had all those stuff. So when I went out, to investigate that story, I took pictures, all the pictures, and I spoke to people and had the recordings. So I sent everything to Lagos. The next day, they ran that story again. It was still the story that led the paper. About two weeks later, higher assassins came to my house to kill me. I escaped by God's grace. And uh, Emelumba, a declan Emelumba, who is now the commissioner for information in Limbo State, I'm calling out Emelumba today to challenge what I've said today, that Angela Hintuge had found justice after she was killed. They threatened even the family not to talk to me again. And after threatening the family, and the family called me and said they cannot talk to me, that their lives is in danger. They came for me, and I fled. I challenged Emilumba. These are the kind of things that are happening in this country. And before you know it, anybody who stands up to talk about it or to bring it to uh, mean public... Um, limelight or bring it to, to uh, you know a public discourse like this they'll go after them you cannot come after me god is above you people i challenge emelumba today the commissioner for information in Imo state declining emelumba you were the chief press secretary to them at that time and you called me twice and warned me against doing that story and i was almost killed in 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 in, in Imo state it was on february 20th february 2003. I ran away in the night, and you thought All you right, had Mr. won. Isine. There will be a day for you, Emelumba. I'm calling out Emelumba. Okay, right. so, so I'm coming back to the uh, this particular uh, case. We know that in other parts of the world, you know, when things like this happen, there's there's an unsolved m murder. The bodies can even be exhumed, even you know, many many years later, you know, so that they can continue investigations. But in a country like this where we might not exactly have all the, you know, forensics to, you know, do such, I mean, burying her, burying Eno Bongomorin, was that the right thing to do since the, the case is still ongoing? Because the police said, uh, whether you keep it um, like what I learned, 
the mortician said, hey, whether you keep it, you can't keep this kind of corpse for this long because it was bloated and um, there's nothing they will do about it. There's nothing they can, there's nothing can change. And as far as the police um, were concerned, they had completed the investigation, even at that time. Uh, by the time they had uh, sort of indoctrinated the guy, tell him what to say, and he came to that's loss and insult us, and the police deliberately brought out some of the data journalists in Akwaibum because that did not represent. I stand to defend journalists in Akwaibum State. Those guys you saw there were nitwits that were recruited by the police public relations officer. I can mention some of the best journalists in Akwaibum State who were never okay, there. Mr. They were Mr. Rushing Mr. from the barrier okay. where they went for the burial of Inubon. In, okay. in Inubon. Coming back while the police was uh, conducting the 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 the, the charade, they called a, a, a parade or a press briefing, and and right. and you we saw all that. So you could not have found serious journalists like me. I'm from Okaibum, and there are okay, so, so many good journalists Mr. Isine, in Mr. Isine. Isine. asking those kind of stupid questions okay. that we had. All, All right. right. Thank um, you. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Isine. You've made um, lots of claims. So, yes, we do need to follow up, especially with the police in the States. Thank you very much for joining us. Please on the bring breakfast. them and bring me. All I'll right. be ready to face them. Thank right. you very Have much. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. All right. So we'll go on a short Ooh. break here to return to join the PRO in Imo State to talk about the insecurity there. Do you stay with us.